What's up everybody? Today I'm going to be going through my PS5 collection. I decided to do this because it's right around three years since the PS5 was released. For me, I did not get it the day it came out. I didn't get it till like early December, so it is like almost exactly three years for me. So I have about 20 games. I think I might have actually exactly 20. And I'm just going to go through them, talk about them. I really love the PS5 so far. I think it's been great. And yeah, I think it's a good time to just look at the collection and see kind of what's come out so far. And I think it could be interesting also to think back to like the PS4 and see what kind of games we had three years in at that time. So we're going to start here with the first game. It's a game that honestly I uh, didn't really like. So we're not starting off good. That is with Deathloop. So Deathloop is a game that honestly I don't really know why I bought, to be completely honest with you. I usually don't like this style of game, um, and this was that game that like got showed at every PlayStation showcase for like three years, and everyone just got like super sick of it, so like why do you keep showing this game over and over? And it never looked good to me whenever they showed it, but then stuff like this started happening, and it was getting nines and tens from like everyone, and it was getting like Game of the Year nominations, so I was like, well... I guess I'll give it a try, and uh, big surprise, the game that didn't look good to me for three years, I didn't like it. <laughs> so, yeah, I think I got it for like 30 so I mean, I'm not too mad, I didn't pay the full price. Uh, I don't think it's like a bad game, I wouldn't ever say this is like a bad game. I don't really understand all the 9s and 10s though, if I'm being brutally honest with you. But I also know a lot of people liked this game, so just a personal preference thing, I guess. Next up, we have a game that I did like, which was Dying Light 2 Stay Human. Um, yeah, I really liked the first Dying Light. This one's not as good as that one, but it is still pretty good. Um, one thing I really noticed with this game is that it was a lot of kind of like running in circles, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to explain this right, but it was a lot of like go here and then you go somewhere else and then it's like go back to where you started and then like keep going in circles almost and that kind of annoyed me in all honesty i think i know why they did it i think they did it because they wanted you exploring this world they wanted you like parkouring running all around but um yeah it was kind of annoying and also the game's already like really long and this just made it even longer this one's kind of interesting when i think back on it actually because when i was playing through it i was like yeah it's okay but, like, I wanted to keep playing it. It, kept, it made, made me keep on coming back. So, I guess that gives, gives it points. Um, yeah. It's a decent game. Now we have one that uh, some of you might turn off the video after this. But we have Elden Ring. So, you might be thinking, Zach, why would I turn off the video? That's one of the best games on the entire system. Why would, why would I turn off the video for you owning that? Well, you might want to turn off the video because actually have not played it yet so let me explain myself so i've never really gotten into souls games yet um i don't know i don't know why it just seems to happen that way for people like we play one and it'll it'll click it hasn't happened for me yet um so i didn't want this one when it first came out but it kind of felt wrong not to have it because it's like one of the best games ever so recently just this past week i was in gamestop literally first time i bought anything at gamestop in like five years probably and I was doing, they had a buy two, get one on any pre-owned game. So I had two Switch games that were like $40. So I needed to find something else that was like 40. Cause obviously with a buy two, get one, like the cheapest thing is what becomes free. So you should kind of try to make them all the same price. So I was looking around for something else that was like close to 40. And I saw Elden Ring sitting there for $40 used. And I'm like, you know what? This is, this is the time. Th this is the time that I should buy this. Cause essentially free right one of the three games i need and i haven't played it yet it's only been a week i will play elden ring i will but not yet so right there elden ring game of, game of the generation right so let's follow it up with another game of the generation shall we with goat simulator 3 so i just got distracted there because i just realized this game's rated teen which is kind of hilarious but i bought this one i think it was like 20 bucks at best buy 
it was one of those ones where like it was pretty early in the life cycle like i think this was i think i got some like 2021 i think i could be wrong but it's one of those times where like when you see a really cheap one and it's like a new system you kind of just want it and like you want it for the collection um it's, it, I mean, it was pretty fun i remember like for me like my age i feel like if you're my age you grew up like watching people play this game on youtube well the first one and i, I remember playing it like on my like shitty laptop and then I played it on PS4 when it was free with PS Plus. Got the Platinum. Which that's the first time I mentioned Platinum, so I'm probably going to mention that a couple times because I do go for trophies. Um, so that is something that matters to me when I talk about if I like the game or not. Um, so I had the Platinum for the first game, so I'm like, you know what? Let's just do it for this one. I also thought it was kind of cool that they even made a physical one. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a fun game. It's not really as funny as it was when I was like 12, but it's still pretty fun. I enjoyed it. So okay, we had Elden Ring, then we have Goat Simulator 3. So let's keep it going with the games of the generation with an actual one, which is God of War Ragnarok. Really don't know what I really need to say about this game, because it's obviously incredible. I absolutely loved it. I love the story, I love the characters, I love the gameplay. I love everything they did with this game. I also like, a lot of you probably know the story that this was gonna be like a trilogy they decided to just end it with the second one like just wrap up the story personally i really like that because yeah i don't really want to wait any longer and i mean it's great i remember when it came out i just literally the only thing i wanted to play and um i think i played it for like 45 hours which is kind of a, a lot for me with like a single player game especially because this game isn't even like fully open world like that's a long time and i, I absolutely loved it so not really much else i have to say obviously it's got a ragnarok launch edition i don't like actually that sony puts these on there personally but it is what it is um next up we have hades um once again it's like a game where it's like what i really need to say about it everyone knows this is like an amazing game i do love roguelikes so like this was a perfect match for me um i hadn't played it yet actually when i got this version um and yeah, it's great. Everything everyone says about it is true. And it's super impressive that they have such a good story with great characters um, in a roguelike. I've never really seen that before. Also, this physical version comes with a nice little art book, which is pretty cool because the characters in Hades are really cool. So this was worthy of getting even if you have played it before. Um, I do have to go back to this game though, sadly I actually have not beaten it, I haven't completed a run yet. I get to the final boss every time, and I just can't beat it, I don't know why. But, that's Hades, I do have to go back to that eventually. Next up, a game that for some reason is kind of controversial, which is Horizon Forbidden West. Now you may notice, my copy is messed up, love it. And can't even get a replacement case because that is on the actual label, which is just awesome. So, I'm sorry, this probably pains you to even look at, but, um, yeah, that's something where, like, when this game's, like, 10 or 20 bucks in, like, five years, I'll probably buy it again just to not have that on my case. But, Horizon is a series that, like, people seem to not really like. Um, for me personally, I played Zero Dawn. I got a day it came out, you can actually see that right there behind me it's kind of cropped out but that is the zero dawn poster i don't know if that was like for the pre-order if it just came with the game i don't remember but anyway i got zero dawn the day it came out and it just didn't really hook me i i put it down for like years i think that game came out in like 2017 and i didn't come back till it till like 2020 and but when i came back to it i really got into it i really really got into it and that was you know close to when forbidden west came out so when this game came out like, I, I was all in. Like, I was ready. I wanted to play it. And I did. And I played it all the way through. Got the platinum, everything. And I absolutely loved it. I mean, a lot of people, like I said, don't seem to really like this game. I think it's just because Horizon's, like, probably the most unlucky franchise on the planet. Because the first game came out right alongside um, Breath of the Wild. And then this game came out right alongside Elden Ring. So... I think it's just one of those things where like just bad timing just really bad timing because this game isn't like revolutionary it's it's really not but like i just enjoy them a lot and like it's clearly gonna be a third one 
I'll play that as well. I'm excited. Horizon, for whatever reason, seems very polarizing, but I, I, I love it. I, I really do. Now, speaking of polarizing, we have Life is Strange, True Colors. So this is another franchise like a lot of people just do not like, but I like Life is Strange. Um, just three of them. I've played all three. Did not like the second one. The second one really pissed me off because the entire time I played it, every decision I made, it, it just felt like I made the wrong decision and it really pissed me off. But other than that, I love the first one and I decided to pick this one up as well. And I actually really like this one. I don't like it as much as the first one. I don't think they'll ever make a Life is Strange that's better than the first one, in all honesty. But I like this one. I like the characters. Um, I, d I do remember there was one part that was like extremely absurd. Like I think... I don't know if you care about spoilers, but I think like a char like this character literally gets shot like in the head, and then she's just like fine. So that kind of was weird. It kind of got a little off the off the rails there, but I, I like this one. It was it was pretty good. Next up, we have a game that I think is one of the most underrated games on the PS5 right now, and that is Marvel Guardians of the Galaxy. So let's talk about this game. This game came out at a really bad time. This game came out pretty soon after the Avengers game, which was an absolute train wreck, a disgrace. And so a lot of people, right, because for those who don't know, Marvel, the Avengers was published by Square Enix. So a lot of people saw Marvel and they saw Square Enix and they said, nope, I'm not getting God again. I'm not touching that game no matter what. Which is really unfortunate because this game is nothing like the Avengers game. And again, a lot of people saw Square Enix and assumed bad, but it's different developers. Um, the Avengers game was primarily developed by Crystal Dynamics, and as you can see, this game was Eidos Montreal. So it's very unfortunate that this game kind of got lumped in with it because it's nothing like the Avengers. It's not like a live service, whatever kind of game. This is just a typical single player uh, action adventure game. I don't know why I couldn't think of the word there, but I absolutely love this game. I love the Guardians of the Galaxy in general. You put them in anything, I'm interested. This game, like, genuinely was super, super fun. Like, I really enjoyed playing it. And it's not, like, a perfect game. Like, I'm not going to act like it's, like, some masterpiece. But it's genuinely extremely fun. I really like their takes on these characters. They really did, like, flesh them out a lot. And... It's just fun. It's just fun to play. And I really do feel bad that this game got lumped in with the Avengers game. Because it really is nothing like it. Um, so if you haven't played this game, maybe you were one of the people who didn't want it because of the Square Enix Marvel thing. I would highly recommend it. Especially because you can probably get it cheaper now. So, yeah. You, everyone should play this game, in my opinion. And we got a couple Marvel games coming. First off with Spider-Man... Miles Morales. So this was actually bundled with my PS5. I got one of those like, you know, when the PS5 launched, there's like all those bundles, and a lot of them were like kind of garbage. But I got one. Um, it was from Costco, and surprisingly enough, it was from Costco. But it actually was a pretty good bundle. It was the PS5, this game, which was the first game I was gonna want to play anyway, and an extra controller. So it was actually a pretty good bundle. The only thing is, this is the uh, Ultimate Launch Edition, which I haven't played Spider-Man Remastered. I don't really have an interest in doing that just because there's been so many spider-man games kind of quickly i don't really feel like i want to play through the first one all over again maybe i want a couple years though but yeah this was really really cool to have on day one um obviously it's not a full spider-man game it's kind of like one of those half dlc half sequel games but for me i absolutely loved it i really like miles morales as a character i think right now i kind of prefer him over peter honestly but that's partly just because across the spider-verse was so good but yeah so even though this was one of those games which actually i didn't mention this yet a lot of the ps5 games so far have been cross-gen which is something that i personally have been kind of disappointed with i understand why they did it but I just think it kind of took away from the start of the generation. But it does seem like now I'd say we're at a point where I think that's kind of done. Some third parties are still going to do it. But I think we're at a point where, like, it's pretty much over. Um, so, yes, this game was on PS4. And, you know, there are some things holding it back because of that. But I absolutely loved this game. I really did. 
I also think it kind of helped because, like I said, I got my PS5 in December, and this game is set in, like, winter, Christmas time. So, honestly, I think that kind of helped because it was just, like, good vibes playing this game, honestly. Yeah, love this game. But it's not even the best Spider-Man game on the system because we also have Spider-Man 2. So, Spider-Man 2 is just it's just perfect it really is just perfect in my opinion i absolutely love it takes everything that i liked from the first game and miles morales and just builds on all of it so this is just one of those games where it's like i knew it was gonna be good right that's why like i bought it day one i knew it was gonna be good and it was that good and it even like exceeded my expectations i really do think it's one of the one of if not maybe the best superhero game ever made and I love how they were able to incorporate Peter and Miles at the same time. I think they did a really good job of that. I think that's something that's more difficult than people maybe gave them credit for to pull that off so easily. And yeah, I mean, I, I loved everything that they did in this game. I don't know how the hell Insomniac is making so many games so quickly. They're absolutely carrying this generation for PlayStation, if we're going to be completely honest. Um, yeah, absolutely amazing game. I don't need to say that much about it because it's Spider-Man 2. Come on. Next up, we got another newer game, which was, which is Mortal Kombat 1. Yeah, it's alright. Like, it's alright. I'm a big NetherRealm guy. I, I buy every single one of their games. Um, I feel like in, like, fighting games, you know, you kind of pick your side, I guess you could say, like, Tekken, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat. For me, it's just NetherRealm. Those are the games that I enjoy. Um... I don't dislike those other games, but I'm just saying they're the ones I get into. And this game, the reason why I'm saying eh is because when I first got it and was playing it, I was loving it. I was absolutely loving it. The, the story mode is really good. It gets absurd and kind of stupid at the end. But, I mean, it's Mortal Kombat. Are you expecting, you know, elite literature? No, it's Mortal Kombat, okay? So, I really was enjoying the game a lot. Got into the multiplayer for a bit. Got the platinum, all that kind of stuff. But I've kind of been, like, turned off by this game's monetization recently. Obviously, we all know about the famous $12 fatality. But it's, like, it's more than that. Like, even just the fact that there's monetization at all. Like, as if this is a free-to-play game. This is $70. I mean, this is a $70 game. And day one, I'm, like, getting pop-ups about, like, the store. You know, like, that's something I expect from a free-to-play game. That's okay. I'm not going to complain about that. It's a free-to-play game. This is $70, and day one I'm, like, getting monetization, and I don't know. It, it just turned me off in the game a little bit. Actually, just last night I was on my PS5, and I was going to install something, and I'm like, I could probably clear some space. Like, I didn't really need to, but I was like, ah, I might as well. And I saw this one was still on my system. It's, like, 120 gigabytes, and I was just like, yeah, you know, I just don't think I'm going to go back to it. But I did play it for, like, 50 hours, I think, so, I mean... Some of that was just grinding for a stupid-ass trophy, but yeah, I don't know. I'm a little turned off by it right now. All right, next up is another really great game, and you're probably thinking, oh, you must have played this one, right? Have not played this one. Um, Persona 5 Royal. Persona is a series that I have not played yet, and if I'm honest with you, the main reason I haven't played it is just the time sink. It's just one of those things where... I'm almost like, do I have the time to invest like a hundred hours into this game right now? Not even necessarily like free time, but just like there's other games I want to play, especially this year. This year, I mean, my backlog is, is it's, it's, it's over. Like I'm never getting to any of these games that I've missed this year because there was just so many games this year. This isn't a game from this year. I don't, yeah, yeah this isn't from this year. But anyway, I did buy it this year. It was like $20 on Amazon. And I was like, you know what, I just want it. Because I want to play Persona. I want to get into it. I want to love it the way Persona fans love it. It's just one of those things where, like, man, it's just hard to, like, jump in when you know you're, like, 100 hours minimum. Um, this is the type of thing where, like, maybe if there's a summer where, like, there's really nothing to play and I'm really, you know, bored or whatever. This is one that I really want to try. Also, this box art is just beautiful now that I'm looking at it right now. So, I'm happy to have it in the collection regardless, but this is definitely one I want to play. Alright, so now we're getting in to an interesting one, which is Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. Once again, from Insomniac, carrying the generation. Absolute mad lads over there. 
here's why this is interesting. So Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. When it first came out, I got it day one. Absolutely loved it. Right? I was like, this is incredible. This was one of the first games on PS5 that wasn't also on PS4. And I did feel like, okay, you can feel it. Like this is this is next gen. Now obviously, you know, the whole like this is only of possible on ps5 we all know that's just marketing it's going to work on a high-end pc it would probably run on an xbox they could get it to work on a ps4 if they really had to it's just marketing but it did really feel next gen to me the graphics it's just absolutely stunning how good this game looks i mean it, a lot of people say this but it's like it really does look like you know like a pixar movie like a high budget animated film that you can control like it, it looks like that the entire way through it's it's incredible the reason why i'm hesitating a little bit here is as the months have gone by, actually, I think it's been like two years now. As the years have gone by, I don't really think about this game anymore. And I don't know if this is going to make sense, but like, it just didn't really leave like an impression on me, I guess is the point I'm trying to make. And I think that's mainly because of the length. This game's like pretty short. Like I got the platinum in it and I think, I don't think I had more than like 15 hours played, which is like short, right? Considering I did everything basically so yeah i don't know if that's making sense i'm not trying to say it's a bad game it's an absolutely incredible game especially considering now obviously it's not 70 dollars anymore so there's no reason to really worry about that you should absolutely jump in and play this game and yeah it's just one of those things where like as the years have gone on i don't really keep thinking about it and i think that's interesting right like i don't really know what that means but i just think it means it's a really good game but it's just not one that like you know, when the PS6 comes out, if I'm making a video, what are the best PS5 games? I don't know if I would think of this one immediately, right? Once I, like, looked back, I'd be like, oh, I gotta include this game. But it wouldn't pop in my head instantly. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really know what that means. But it's an absolutely great game. Don't get me wrong. But I thought that was a little interesting thing to put in there, because I have thought about that. So speaking of ga a game that I didn't really keep thinking about once I stopped playing it, let's go to a game that... I thought about for months after I stopped playing it, which is another PS5 exclusive game, Returnal. Now, Returnal is a game that I absolutely love. I love Returnal so much. It was my favorite PS5 game up until some of these heavy hitters started coming out, like God of War, Horizon, Spider-Man. But before all of them, this was the one. This was the one right here. This was my favorite PS5 game. I love it. I said earlier, I like roguelikes. This is kind of a roguelike. It's they, sometimes I say rogue light. It is rogue extremely light. It's very much maybe not really a roguelike, but I absolutely loved it. And this is a very difficult game. That's something that sometimes kind of turns me off. I I'm fine with a difficult you know game, but I sometimes I'm just like, yeah, I don't know, right? Maybe that's part of why I don't love Souls games sometimes, but this game, it just hooked me, and I just could not stop playing. It was literally the only game I played for like a couple weeks, just trying to get through it, trying to get everything. Speaking of getting everything, when this game came out, the trophies were pretty bugged, and it did not save my progress correctly, and so the trophy bugged out, I had to start all over, have not actually gone back and gotten all those trophies. It's something that kind of haunts me, if I'm totally honest with you, because I want this platinum, and I did earn it, technically. I was on the path to earning it, at least, and what I had left was not difficult. It was just time-consuming. Regardless, this game is absolutely incredible. I wish more people played it. I think it got hurt by the fact that it came out pretty early. It's a new IP. Not that many people had PS5s yet because that was back in the time when it was really hard to get one. So if you have a PS5 now and you haven't played this game, I would highly recommend it. This is another one of those games where people were a little questionable about the $70 price tag. It's not $70 anymore. It's probably on PS Plus. Probably get it for like 30 or 40, maybe even 20, I don't know. Point is, it's not 70 anymore, you don't gotta worry about that. I think everyone should try out this game. I just think it's absolutely incredible. The gameplay, the graphics, the sound design especially, that's not something I usually notice. I noticed it in this one. It's absolutely incredible. I love Returnal so much. Even just talking about it just then, you could probably tell you really started coming out there how much I love this game. So here's a game that I didn't love, which was Riders Republic. Now you may notice, this is the only Ubisoft game I own on the PS5, and that's because I don't like Ubisoft. But I saw Riders Republic 
get announced, and I was like, that looks fun as hell. And you know what? It looks like something that is different than what Ubisoft typically makes, so I want to support it. I want to get it. Did not buy it when it came out, though, because you should never buy Ubisoft games when they come out, because Ubisoft games go down to 20 bucks literally, like, two weeks after they come out. I don't, I don't know why you'd ever buy a Ubisoft game day one. But anyway, so I didn't buy it day one. Got it when it was, like, 20 bucks, And... I was really, really disappointed, to be completely honest with you. It still is fun, right? Like the, uh, I don't remember what they called that, but the races where you flip between the different um, vehicles, really, really fun. But those are like a limited event in the game. Like you can't just like queue that mode and just keep playing it. Actually, I don't know if they've changed that, but that's how it was when I played it. Just didn't like that. And also, remember how I said this isn't the type of game that Ubisoft typically makes? Well, when you actually get into the game, it's a lot of being on a big map, you go from point A to point B, you look at different uh, points of interest on the map, and you do a mission, or you in this game you do like a challenge or whatever, you do a race. And it was at that point that I realized this is like every other Ubisoft game when it comes to the map and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it, it was disappointing. It was really disappointing. There were also some modes that like I would try to play and I just, I was never able to get in the lobby, ever. I don't know if that's like because the servers weren't working or if there was just nobody queuing it. I have no idea. But yes, yeah, a disappointing one because I was I was excited for this one. I really was. Here's another PS5 launch title, Sackboy: A Big Adventure. Now this game I absolutely love. I think this game is underrated. I think this game is very underrated. It is a great. 3D platformer. Maybe that's just because it was a launch title, so it was like one of the first PS5 games I played. That could be part of it. But I absolutely love this game. So I've always loved Little Big Planet. I grew up with it. But I didn't really like Little Big Planet 3. And I think the main reason I didn't like it is this developer right here, Sumo Digital. I felt like with Little Big Planet 3, Sumo Digital was trying to almost pretend that they were media molecule. They were trying to recreate it. Little Big Planet 3 is not bad, but I felt like they were trying to recreate what Media Molecule did. With this game, I feel like they took a little more ownership of this franchise and this character and kind of built their own thing, right? Obviously, this is a big change for the franchise. There's a reason why it's not called Little Big Planet, which is that there's no level creation and it's a 3D platformer, not a 2D platformer. So it is a big change, but it just worked. Like this game is just so fun. It, it really was like, it was so much fun to play. This is another one you can find at Cheap now. I absolutely recommend you pick this game up. I, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I think Sumo Digital got bought by like Tencent. So I don't know. I, I, I think that means they'll never make another Little Big Planet game, which really does make me sad because I feel like they finally kind of hit their mark here with Sackboy. So next we have a game that you will notice is still in the wrapper, and that is Star Wars Jedi Survivor. So the first Star Wars Jedi game, I did not play when it came out. I didn't play it for years until it came out on PS Plus, and I was like, oh wow, this game is actually really, really good. So then I was really excited for Survivor, but when it came out, as many of you probably know, it had a lot of technical issues when it came out, and I was like, you know what, I'll wait. I, I know I'm going to buy it at some point, but I'll wait. So I ended up finding it, really good deal, it was like $20 after, it was like on sale, plus there was like a discount code, I got it for like $20 which is the cheapest I've ever seen it. So that was a really, really good deal. So why haven't I opened it and played it? This was the same week that Mario Wonder and Spider-Man 2 came out. So in other words, did not have time for this one, but I am looking forward to playing it at some point. Next up, Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania. So this one was one of those other ones where it was kind of early with the PS5 coming out. And I got saw this one for ten dollars, so I was like, I just have to. Like early in a generation, if I see something for like twenty dollars or ten dollars, it's like I just want it. I want it for the collection. I loved Super Monkey Ball growing up, and this one kind of disappointed me. It's a great game. Like it is the best Monkey Ball game made in a very long time. The reason why it disappointed me is because like I just didn't really enjoy it as much as I remembered enjoying it. If that makes sense, it was just one of those situations where you play something as a kid. You really like it. You go back to it when you're a little older, and it just doesn't really hit the same. Um, but this is not a bad game at all. I don't want to make it seem like it's a bad game because it's absolutely 
a great monkey ball game. I just didn't enjoy it as much as I really expected to. Now we have the last game here, which is also in a wrapper, which is the Quarry. So this game was another like Black Friday type pickup. It was like $10, so I just bought it. Um, it's developed by Supermassive Games, so if you know PlayStation, you know they made Until Dawn. I absolutely love Until Dawn. One of my favorite horror games, one of my favorite PS4 games. I have great memories with that game. So I was excited when they made this game. I don't really like what they're doing with the Dark Pictures anthology, if I'm honest. I don't really like it just because I feel like there's too many of them coming out a little too quick. I can't even really keep track. They're starting to blend together. I don't really like it. But this one, The Quarry, was a little more similar to what you would expect from Until Dawn. So yeah, I'm excited to play this one. I actually thought I had this on PS Plus. I guess it like expired and it's not on PS Plus anymore. So I was like, you know what? I'll buy it for $10. So with all of that said, that is my PS5 collection after three years. And I just dropped all of them. Anyway, that's the collection after three years. Um, let me know what you thought, and uh, let me know your collection in the comments. And uh, yell at me for not playing Elden Ring.